But for now, let's turn to Russia's war on Ukraine, as there is new intensity to the battle for the Donbass and new signs that Russia's push to capture this strategic region in eastern Ukraine is stalling. This is video showing Ukrainian defenses on the northern edge of that front. Heavy guns are now key to the fighting, and in their morning report, Ukraine's generals say Russian forces are shelling across the region. They are preparing, apparently, for a new offensive to capture strategic cities in Donetsk. But in its latest analysis, the U.S. military says Russian forces have made no significant progress, managing to capture only a few kilometers of territory in the battle for the Donbass. There's also a new revelation, the Pentagon now claiming that dissension is growing in the Russian ranks and that ground forces are refusing orders from top generals to advance. With all of that, let's now go to the CBC's Briar Stewart. She is with the CBC News team right now on the ground in Ukraine. Uh, good to see you, Briar. You are right now in Bucha, just outside the Ukrainian capital, and we've seen the war's terrible cost in lives there. The toll is higher this morning following uh, Russian airstrikes on Odessa. Let's begin there. What do we know? Uh, very good morning, Michael. And just before we get to Odessa, I do want to give viewers a sense of just where I am. You mentioned I'm in Bucha, and uh, we'll just—I'll step away here for a minute. I'm standing in front of a shopping mall that came under attack in the very early days of the war, so back at the end of February. And this entire area here, there is starting to be some restoration work. Uh, there's some demolition uh, going on right now because Russian troops have withdrawn from the area. But of course, they are now concentrated in other parts of Ukraine. And you mentioned the city of Odessa. Odessa came under missile attack yesterday through the day uh, and into the evening as well. Now, there was some conflicting reports about how many missiles actually hit the city. Uh, the, the, the officials um, have said that there were four, that there were seven, but a shopping mall there um, did catch on fire, and we understand that one person was killed and five people were injured. And there are reports that a number of other sites, including tourist sites, were damaged as well. Now, that's the situation in Odessa, but you mentioned also the situation in the northeast where the Ukrainian forces are trying to claw back some of the territory that Russia has seized from them, particularly around Kharkiv. And the very strategic city of Izium, which is about 120 kilometers southeast of Kharkiv, uh, was occupied by Russian forces back in March. And now Ukrainian officials who've been able to get in there and kind of look at the situation on the ground have discovered the bodies of 44 people who were found in the basement of a collapsed building. Now, uh, the governor for the area says that this is just another evidence of, of Russia's war crimes that the military is 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 conducting here. And in terms of just the death toll as well, we're hearing from the United Nations this morning that the death toll is likely several thousand higher than the 3,400 people that they currently have kind of on the record now. That's 3,400 civilians. And on top of people who've been killed, you know, in direct combat, who've been, you know, caught up in shelling or some other kind of attack, there's also about 3,000 people who have died because they haven't been able to get medical care for illnesses that they've already had. I mean, you have to appreciate that people had to flee. Even if their direct community, you know, wasn't under attack, people had to leave. They couldn't go to doctor's appointments. They couldn't follow up with their uh, their care. And so those numbers also kind of are, are part of the whole picture of just, you know, the, the toll that this has taken on this country. And part of the picture that we want to also get a better understanding of right now has to do with the city of Mariupol, and particularly the Azovstal uh, steel mill that has been the focus for those UN-led humanitarian rescues. What is happening there right now? Yes, and in fact, the UN called what's happening in Mariupol kind of a black hole when they're looking at the data because there's not a sense really at all of just how many people have died there. And there's really not even a, a clear idea of what is going on inside the Azovstal steel plant. I mean, you had the Ukrainian deputy prime minister the other day say that all the civilians, all women and children and the elderly had been uh, evacuated from there. You now have a, an aide to the mayor of Mariupol saying that, no, there's actually about 100 civilians still in the plant. So there are some conflicting reports. But we do know that there are Ukrainian fighters that are still in there. These are fighters who are with the Azov Battalion. Uh, that was a far-right group that was folded into Ukraine's military uh, after 2014. And we spoke with uh, the fiancé of a, a man who's in there. And um, he's been in there since really the beginning of the war. She last talked to him on Friday uh, via text message. And she said that when she did, he was basically saying goodbye. Take a listen. I'm crying. 
just crying. And also I said to him, no, it's not true. And I mean, it was very um, difficult for her to talk about because not only was she not, you know, getting information from her fiance, but they're they're essentially in in the plant, um, waiting, waiting for some kind of help that really has not arrived. And that's because the Ukraine does not have um, control of the area. Russia has uh, almost complete control of Mariupol, and there are reports that Russian military uh, have begun to, to storm the steel plant. Briar, thank you for that. Appreciate the update. The CBC's Briar Stewart in Bucha.